Welcome back to the studio space. As you can tell, this might be another week of post. Could it, could it be? Could I possibly stay a little bit consistent? Let's hope so. Um, you've been shooting for a while. Uh, maybe you picked it up as a hobby. Maybe you're a little bit more interested in pursuing photography and or videography uh, as a profession or side hustle or all of the above. Before you take that first gig, uh, whether it's paid or whether it's for your family or some friends, or maybe you just wanna help out a small business in your area, um, there might be a few things you may wanna pick up uh, to have in your bag and just to kind of have in your workspace. Now we're not expecting you to have the biggest, brightest, shiniest, newest camera or to go out and get a bunch of expense gear that you may or may not need, but let's, uh, let's be serious. We need all the camera gear. But these are a few cheap things to keep in mind when you start shooting either professionally or you start to pursue this a little bit more seriously. Now we're not gonna spend uh, a ton of money because when I started off, I barely had anything. So these are based off of kind of mistakes I've made. Uh, I've done a few hundred uh, pro session, paid sessions uh, in my day so far. Uh, so I wanna share a little bit of the things that I wish I picked up before I even took my first booking. First thing is going to be batteries. Make sure you have some spare batteries, more than one. I try to keep more than two. When I started off, I started with two didn't end up being enough uh, first session or that first couple of sessions I blast through two batteries easily go ahead and pick up two keep them in your bag make sure they're charged you don't always have to get the name brand camera battery just make sure when you're reading through and you're going through looking uh, at the third-party brands that you read as many reviews as you can kind of average out what they say if some of them are saying one thing or saying another thing it may be good to kind of move on but if you really can if you have the money you know pick up the name name brand ones second thing extra memory cards now these maybe spend a little bit more if you can faster card better card in most situations uh, again make sure to, to read any kind of reviews that you possibly can go through as many as you can see what people are saying about that specific one I personally stick with SanDisk uh, it's the only cards that I've ever used I've used their cheapest their intermediate their kind of not top of the line but they're they're upper kind of quality ones and uh, I've yet to have one fail but it's always good to you know pick up a few pick up as many as you possibly can because you never know when you're gonna need them next thing would be just a basic microfiber cloth of course you can do your best to use what you're wearing use what you have but it's always good to have a clean one stash somewhere in your bag at all times the fourth thing that you should probably pick up don't necessarily have to keep them on you but i would strongly recommend that you did is a sensor cleaner it's kind of like a q-tip um, but for your camera sensor it's a good thing to have uh, let's say you're taking a photo and you notice there's a speck but you look at your glass your glass is clean you can kind of tear this open Granted, you know, you're in a low traffic, kind of no wind kind of area. You can clean off your sensor then you can take another couple test shots, make sure everything's all clean and good to go. Keep in mind, I wouldn't necessarily clean your sensor outside, outdoors, but if you're inside, you're indoors, maybe you're doing some inside portraits or doing some real estate, you should be perfectly safe to uh, clean your sensor with this in case of emergencies. The last thing I'm going to recommend you pick up is kind of not necessarily needed, but it, it ends up being a good thing to have. It's ended up being a good thing to have for me personally, just because some of my clients are, they're interested in that instant gratification. That is a memory card reader. This big chunky boy right here uh, reads uh, CF, uh, micro SD and SD cards. Now you don't, you're not expected to you know, provide all your photos immediately, but depending on the shoot, like if it's a portrait or if I'm doing an event, uh, sometimes my client wants a real quick uh, photo to post to Instagram to show what's going on. Maybe they want something a little bit nicer than their phone. That's where this comes in. You can download your raw files directly onto your phone, depending on what kind of phone you have uh, and do some editing. Me personally, I like Room Mobile uh, and then you can airdrop, Dropbox, or maybe text depending on you know the bandwidth at the time but yeah always a good thing to have keep it in your bag take it with you i suggest you pick one up don't have to be name brand again just pick up one that has plenty of good reviews within reason 
that wraps it up. I mean, not really much to uh, to go out and buy. You don't have to go out and buy. None of this is required in any way, but there are a couple good things that I always have in my bag. Uh, some of the things that I wish I had purchased or before I took my first paid gig. Um, but that's what mistakes are for. They're for learning. If you're not learning, then there's no real point in doing anything, is there? Okay, if you have anything that you would like to add anything that you suggest bringing as well try to keep it low cost i mean obviously you can buy extra lenses and all that but that's not what this video is about this is about the small cheap things that you can pick up for your first gig before your first gig or maybe after your first gig you know use some of that money reinvest it in to your profession there chat with me in the comments i will answer as many as i feel like all right guys i'll see you in the next video hopefully sooner yeah, definitely sooner. Okay, bye.